Well, hello, 1P, and welcome to Ratio and Proportion Using Algebra. I told you we were going to get back to algebra. Uh, this stuff's pretty straightforward algebra, though, so don't panic too much. Uh, I can solve proportional relationships using algebraic methods. So, using algebra to solve a proportion. If we write a ratio as a fraction, we can find two different ways to solve the proportion using our algebra skills. So here's method one. Isolate the unknown, the unknown which in other words is the letter. So here's our um, ratio. Uh, n to 15 equals 22 to 53 and we're going to write it as a fraction just like that. Now when we look at this the ways that we were solving this before aren't immediately obvious. There's nothing like I need to go from 22 to n so what do I have to do to 53 to get to 15? Nothing nice, I'll tell you that. Um, we could see what I have to do to, from, to go from 53 to 15. I'll have to divide by something. Um, and we could figure that out. But it's actually easier than that. And here's how it's easier. And you can use this any time. Uh, what we would like to do is get this variable completely by itself. Right now, it's got this 15 on the bottom that's stopping it from being by itself. And that 15 is dividing the variable. To get rid of something that's dividing, we do the opposite, which is multiply. Okay, To reverse dividing, we multiply. So what I need to do is multiply by 15. If I multiply by 15, 15 divided by 15 is 1, so they're gone. But if I multiply 15 on that side, I have to multiply by 15 on this side. And so what we actually get uh, is just plain n on this side. And on this side, I get 22 multiplied by 15 and then divide it by 53. And you can type it into the calculator all at once like that. So let's pull up the calculator. Oop, not that calculator, that calculator. Uh, pull this in. We can do 22 times 15 divided by 53 and hit equals. So 6.226. 6.226. And that's all there is to it. And you can actually use this any time, even if there was a multiplication relationship between or within the fraction like we did yesterday. Um, you could still use this method because it works absolutely every time. And here's the steps here. The variable will be by itself if 15 were gone. 15 is dividing the variable, so to make it go away we do the opposite. The opposite of dividing is multiplying and you have to do the same thing on the other side of the equation to keep it equal. So here's our example number two. Um, we are going to write it as a fraction to start with. So we've got 12 over x equals 15 over 8. Now here's a problem. The x is on the bottom. Uh, and what we wanted to do was get rid of the uh, get rid of the number that was dividing something because um, up here the variable was on the top. Now it's much easier if the variables on the top. Uh, but when it's ratios, it's really easy to get the variable on the top. We just flip over both fractions. So we get x over 12 equals 8 over 15. We flip them both over. And now that I've got the fraction on the bottom, 12 is dividing the x. So to get rid of it, I do the opposite. I multiply by 12, which cancels that out because 12 divided by 12 is 1. And then I have to do the same thing on the other side. So we get x equals 18 times 12 over 15. Now we're only multiplying the numerator by the 12 because the denominator of 12 is actually 1. And remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators, you multiply the denominators, but 15 times 1 is just 15, so we don't actually put that in there. So now let's punch it into our calculator. Um, 8 times 12 divided by 15, 6.4. So our x in this case is 6.4. Okay, we're going to do a few more. And then I'm going to show you another method. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to talk you through this one and then I'm just going to quickly do the other ones and it would be a good idea if you just put me on pause and try to do the other ones before I give you the answer for them or give you the solution for them. So I'm going to talk you through this one uh, and then I'll talk you through part C as well um, so that we do two different kinds. So this one, the k is being divided by 6, so to get rid of it, I multiply by 6. If I multiply one side by 6, I multiply the other side by 6, and these 6's cancel, and I'm left with just a k on this side. On this side, I have 10 times 6, which is 60. I'm going to actually do that multiplication divided by 9. And now I just plug that into my calculator. 60 divided by 9 is 6.6666666 or 6.6 .6 repeated. Now down here, this one's different because the variable's on the bottom. When the variable's on the bottom, our first step is to flip them over. So we get 6 over 7 equals x over 8. It's also different because the x is on the right side of the equation instead of on the left side of the equation. Uh, but that shouldn't scare us. We want to get x by itself. x is being divided by 8, so to get rid of it, we multiply by 8. And if I multiply by 8 on that side, I multiply by 8 on that side. So this becomes x right here because those two 8's cancel. And over here, I have 8 times 6 divided by 7. Uh, 8 times 6 divided by 7 is 6.9 approximately, and I'm going to put a dot above here to show that it's approximate, 6.9. I rounded to one decimal place. Okay, so put this on pause and try the other ones. Uh, I'm going to put this on pause and finish these off, so I'm going to be right back in a minute with the answer to all of these questions. Okay, so there's the answer to these two questions over here, parts B and D. I multiplied both sides of this thing by 5 to get rid of the 5 that's underneath the P, uh, and then I end up with 25. Now notice we could have done that relationship within the fraction. I know that 2 times 5 gives me 10, so I could have done 5 times 5 to get P and get 25, and that would have been quick, but this is quick too, and it works every time. Um, so this one down here, I had to flip it over to start with, so I got 9 over 6 equals m over 7 when I rewrote it, and then I do the same thing. I have to get rid of the 7 underneath the m, so I multiply both sides by 7 and then use my calculator. Now, I changed this one. I didn't do this one right away because we've got some uh, letters on the bottom <coughs> that have numbers with them, um, so I want to do one of these and then I'll leave the next one for you to do. I'll give you the answer, but I'll leave it for you to do. So again, the letter is on the bottom, so the first thing we have to do is flip everything over because we want the letters on the top. So I'm going to get 7 over 9 equals 4n over 3. And then we'll do the same thing we did before. I want to get rid of the 3 on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 and that's going to get rid of that. So then I have 7 times 3 divided by 9, and let's actually get that on here. 7 times 3 is 21, uh, divided by 9 is 2.3 repeated. So this side is 2.3, and this side isn't just n though, it's 4n. And so now we have to do what we did with algebra. I got to get rid of the 4. The 4 is multiplying the n. To get rid of something that's multiplying, I do the opposite. I divide. So divide both things by 4 so that now those 4's go away and I'm left with just n on this side. And I have 2.333. I've still got it on my calculator, so I'm just going to go divide by 4. And I get 0.58. 0 0.58, and I rounded that, so I'm going to put a little dot above there because it's approximate. Okay, so try this one, and hopefully you got this for an answer. R equals 0.88. Okay, now there's another algebraic way that we can solve, and this is called cross multiplying. And the first thing that I want to do is show you a property of equivalent fractions. So I'm going to write down another fraction that's exactly the same as a half, uh, two quarters. 
Hopefully you guys know that two quarters is exactly the same as a half, and I can put the equal sign between it. These are exactly the same. Now here's the property of cross multiplication, and it only works if you have a fraction equal to another fraction. This is not the way you multiply fractions. It is the way you solve proportions. So here's the property. If I take and multiply this way, and I do 2 multiplied by 2, my answer is 4. And if I multiply this way, 1, and I multiply 4, my answer is 4. Those two cross multiplications are exactly the same thing. Now, let's try that again. 3 quarters, okay, I'm going to multiply by 10 on top and bottom. So 30 over 40 is equivalent to 3 quarters. And those things are equal, so I'm going to try this cross multiplication property again. 4 times 30 is 120, and 3 times 40 is 120. So those two crosses are equal as well. How about if we find one that we reduce? Uh, I know 25 goes into 100 four times, and 25 goes into 125 five times. So I need to do the cross product here, multiplying across. So 100 times 5 is 500, and 125 times 4, again, you plug it into your calculator if you want, it's 500. So the, the cross, when I multiply numerators by denominators, I get the same answer. So this is useful when solving a ratio. Um, because I can take the two crosses. I can say, okay, n times 53 equals 53n, and I can do 15 times 22. 15 times 22 is uh, 330, and because these are equivalent ratios, I know that those two products have to be equal. And if they're equal, then I have an equation that I can solve. So now my goal is to get n completely by itself, and n is being multiplied by 53, so I'm going to divide by 53. And when I divide by 330 by 53, 330 divided by 53, my answer for n is about 6.2. So n equals 6.2. Now remember I divided by 53 because I wanted to get n by itself. This is what I was trying to get by itself. If I get that n by itself by doing the opposite of what's with it, which is dividing. So we're going to try a few more with cross multiplying. <laughs> and so when I cross multiply, I'm going to do, usually I start with the, with the cross that gives me the variable. So k times 9 is 9k. And then on the other branch of the cross is 6 times 10 is 60. And now to solve, I divide by 9 to get k by itself. And 60 divided by 9, remember that's the, you put in the 60 first, divided by 9. Some people divide upside down all the time. It's 6.6 .6 repeated. So k, let's get the right color here, k equals 6.6 .6 repeated. Uh, let's try the next one. 2 times p, and I usually start with the cross that's going to give me the variable, is 2p. And on the other side, 10 times 5 is 50. And now to get p by itself, 2 is multiplying p. To get it by itself, I divide by 2. Okay, And then the 2 and the 2 cancel, so I'm left with p all alone. And hopefully you know that 50 split into two parts is 25. The next one, 7 times x gives me 7x, and 6 times 8 is 48. Now to get x by itself, I divide by 7, because I want those, two, those to go away so that I have x completely by itself. And 48 divided by 7, top divided by the bottom, remember you go top to bottom, is 6.9. And lastly, 6 times m is 6m, and that is going to equal, that was this crossway. Now i got to do the other crossway, 9 times 7 is 63, 
and now I divide both of those by 6 so that I can cross that out because 6 divided by 6 is 1 so all I'm left with is a single M on this side and 63 divided by 6 is 10.5 so that's a bunch more with cross multiplication I just want to make one small comment here on this one that worked out so nicely. When it works out nicely like that, we probably could have found a relationship that helped us. And so the relationship here within it that helped us, that we could have used, is I have to figure out what I have to multiply 5 by or do to 5 to get to P. And over here, 2 to 10 was times 5. So I would have to do the same thing over here, times 5, and 5 times 5 is 25, which is what we got using cross multiplication. Again, you could have used that multiplication relationship, but cross multiplying works every time. Okay. Uh, next I'm going to do one application question. At the same time of day, all shadows cast by the sun will be proportional to the height of the object casting the shadow. So we have shadow. The two things here that are proportional are the shadow and the object. So we're doing shadow to object and I'm going to put those words down. I'm, that's me, Mrs. Caldwell, I'm 1.53 meters tall. So that's an object, 1.53 meters tall. Uh, I measure my shadow to be 2.6 meters long. So it goes with the shadow, 2.6. Now let's find out our other one. Um, I'm going to measure the tree, the shadow of the tree, because we can't measure the tree itself. The shadow of the tree is 9.8, so shadow's on top, so the 9.8 goes on top. And we don't know how tall the tree is. I'm going to put a T for tall, or T for tree, however you want to look at it. And now we have to decide what we're going to do. Are we going to isolate? Are we going to cross multiply? Uh, it's up to you. If we want to isolate the variable, and I can usually call it method of isolation, you flip them over because the t is on the bottom and we want it on the top. So we need t over 9.8, but I got to flip the other one over as well. 1.53 divided by 2.6. And then to get the t by itself, I have to multiply both sides by 9.8 and I have to multiply this side by 9.8. So I end up having to type in, and that's going to get my t by itself because those cancel, I have to type in 9.8 times 1.53 divided by 2.6. And so I get 2.46 and that's going to be in meters. Now watch what happens if we try cross multiplying. Uh, I have to do the cross, so I do the cross that's on the t first. So 2.6 times t, so it will give me 2.6t. Uh, and the other method, the other way of the cross is 9.8 times 1.53. And then I would have to divide both sides by the 2.6 to get t by itself. So divide them, I get t by itself, and I have to type in 9.8 times 1.53 divided by 2.6, but look, that's exactly what I did over here. So it doesn't matter whether you choose isolation or cross multiplication, you end up exactly the same place in the end, and you get 2.46 is your answer, and that concludes this video.